Hey guys, so if you've had a look at any Wing Chun, you've probably seen people standing in this rather unusual position here, doing a form or some sort of drill. Well, what's going on in that position? Let's have a look. So this stance I'm talking about is used in the first form, as I said, it's used in many drills. It's the very first thing you do in the first form, as it should be, because we build from the ground up always. And if that first part that you put into place is not secure, then your foundations are gonna be weak and it's gonna corrupt everything thereafter. So we need to make sure we've got a good understanding of what's going on in this stance. And we need a good understanding of how it can be made practical because it itself is not a practical tool, but it has practical tools with it. Let's take a look first at how you open that stance in a form and then we'll break down some of its components. So left foot goes into right, the arms are extended, you bend the arms and knees at the same time, stopping the knees when they're level with the toes. Move the toes out, move the heels out, move the hips forwards, a pelvic tilt. I'll now show you that from the side, exactly the same, left to right, arms out in front, Bend the arms and knees, toes out, heels out, hips forwards. So we could just leave this video there now, right? Because you know how to do a GG Kim Your Ma, I've just shown you. Nah, right? This is the problem. Because of the vague description that I've just given you, there's many parts that you're gonna go ahead and get wrong now because you just don't know about them. All I've really taught you just now is how to put your feet at shoulder width apart using basic movements and measures. That's all you've just done. You've positioned your feet in an inward fashion. That's nothing. So let's have a look at some of the details, not fine details, glaringly obvious details that are often missed. Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna look at is control of the spine. And this starts off in the very first movement. When you put your feet together and I told you to bend your arms and lower your body, well, that's what we should be doing there. This is where it goes wrong. People put their feet together, arms out, they lower, and can you see how I'm leaning forwards? Then they open their stance and then they lean back. No part of the first form. We need a controlled descent on a vertical axis. So what we should be doing is putting our spine straight down as if we were putting a pole into the ground. So here, upright position, relaxed and level shoulders. Arms out, bend the arms and knees, toes out, heels out, hips forwards. Maintain that stance throughout the entire form. Don't get lazy and start doing some crap like this or some nonsense like this, you maintain that position in the center with the hips forwards. Right, so the next part we're gonna look at also relates to the spine, but slightly differently. So this time the problem is that people start bobbing up and down. And I'll show you what I mean and why this happens. So if I open my stance, the first part, you know what to look for, right? Going straight down. Now watch my feet for a second. My feet are raising. My toes are raising, I should say. And if you watch my upper body, you'll notice that I'm bobbing up here. Then my heels are gonna raise. And naturally if my heels raise, my spine raises. So my spine goes up again. So I've gone up, up. And I've exaggerated it quite a lot, but if you look closer, you're gonna see that mistake a lot of the time. It's a mistake. We're supposed to be controlling the body, which means we control the descent. We went to that level for a reason. We keep it. Toes out, heels out, hips forwards. And you maintain that line. I'll show you from the side. You know what to look for here. Toes out, heels out, hips forwards. And we shouldn't be bobbing or leaning forwards and back in those first two actions. And 
next bit is that we push the hips forwards. It's a really small movement, it's easily missed if it's not emphasized, okay? And it's very important because this is like the keystone which bridges the gap between the lower and upper body. And it makes this highway possible, which can receive some force and set it down to the ground or borrow um, support from the ground to propel something outwards. So it's very important this. The mistake is that often people are here and when they push the hips forwards, they lean back. So all that good work controlling the spine and just at the last point, boom, it's gone. This is a flawed idea, this idea of having one straight line here. It doesn't make any sense. Because what, you're gonna fight like this? I don't think so. So let's get it right. Arms up, bend the knees, open the toes, open the heels, small pelvic tilt. Upper portion of the spine is upright. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna look at the knees and the feet. Your feet are gonna be a good indicator to let you know if you're on the right or wrong path with this stance. It does it through pressure. If I push in too much with the knees, then I'm gonna increase the amount of pressure on this side of my foot and reduce it on that side of the foot. So I'm gonna become heavy here. If I do the opposite, if I'm too lazy or relaxed with my stance, then the outside is gonna become heavier and the inside is gonna become light. An extreme version of this that you sometimes see is that when people are on the lazy side, then the instep actually raises off the ground and you can see daylight in this portion of the foot, that underneath where it's lifted. That's really bad for Yichi Kim Ma because we're supposed to be finding equilibrium. So we sink into our stance. We have this inward downward pressure, inward because of the work I'm applying to maintain the position, downward because of gravity, and then we find an equilibrium, a balanced footing on the feet. We already know that our knees should be pretty much in line with the tips of the toes, because we did that at the beginning here. And now we're trying to level things out at the base. Focus on what you're feeling. Try to get more of an, a balanced, closer to neutral feeling on the feet. And then that will fix a lot of other things as well. It will put other, other structures in alignment. And you'll probably find it's far easier to focus on one feeling than many strands of information. And then check where you are from there. So the next thing we're gonna consider is focus. Now when you're doing your form, all the way throughout it, you should be able to focus forwards without every single distraction or any distraction that comes into your field of vision, drawing you away from the thing that you're trying to cultivate and build and develop. You should be able to maintain forwards. So it shouldn't look something like this, which I see far too often. Really? <laughs> that's the kind of look you're gonna get, right? All jokes aside, that's the look you're gonna get. Like, what is that? Have some focus. So when you open your stance, we've got these things to consider that we've just discussed already. Focus forwards, please. Here. And keep it there. We're learning to control something deeper than just the movement. We've looked at some of the sort of what's, you know, what do you do within the form? Well, you do this and this and this and you establish a stance. But me personally, I've always been more of a how. And the major how is how do we apply it in a practical setting rather than just a drill and a form. Now, if I open the form again for you, the position, the stance, I should say, for you again here, I've got these two feet point inwards, my knees are inwards, my hips are forward, all of that stuff I've discussed already. And am I gonna fight like this? No way, <laughs> right? But let me just adjust one thing for a second. I might fight like this. 
because I've got that base of support roughly shoulder width apart. I've got my hips tilted forwards, which also helps to align my spine properly, right? I've got the bend in the knees, which will ultimately help me to propel towards or away from another person. But also in movement, when we're looking at it in a dynamic sense, all of these things are still applied. So if when I move, I lose control of my hips and spine, then I'm gonna sway uncontrollably. And if I need to do a second movement, it's gonna be slower, more labor intense, right? So what I need to do is keep control of these features wherever I should go, so that I'm always moving with my form. And when you put it in a sense like that, or when I put it in, or hear it in a sentence like that, I can then understand how these features can be used beyond the form and beyond the drill, which is what we should really be looking at. But I do not see how this can. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.